one of the biggest things that struck me and Tina when it happened was when you mention to people it's happened, everyone has either been through it or knows someone who's been through it. I think, I think it's like one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage. It is phenomenally normal for it to happen, but no one ev ever talks about it. Because of course they don't, because why would you bring that up ever? It's a dreadful thing and people ignore it. But what that means is, because it's so not talked about, it is only when it happens to you that you discover that there is a large support network around you that has experience of it and is able to help. Um, and so myself and Tina both made a very conscious decision very early on that we would talk about it with anyone and not, not, not mention it and not try to brush it away. I felt like it, it could have been easier if I, if more people had been open about miscarriage beforehand because it, it felt like such a shock to be in that room because the only, the only way I knew that that was a possibility was I happened to have picked up a fiction book um, a matter of weeks beforehand that mentioned it. And until then, I didn't even know that mis miscarriage was a thing. I was aware that miscarriage could happen. I had no idea how common it was. I didn't know it was one in four. I thought it was a really rare circumstance. Um, I, thought, I thought that there were contributory factors in the majority of miscarriages. Um, I, so that's why I immediately went to guilt, guilt, guilt. It must have been something I did because it felt like a rare thing and it felt like something that for the most part was caused by something. I didn't know how many miscarriages happen and I didn't know how many of them are never investigated. The number of people that approached me after it had happened and said, that's happened to me or it's happened to my friend or to my daughter, to my aunt, to my... The number of people that shared their stories with me was incredible and it was lovely that they trusted me enough to share that and it, it made me feel less alone, it made me feel less like a failure when I shouldn't feel like a failure, but you can't help it. I, I, felt, I felt slightly better knowing that I wasn't the only one and that it wasn't some unique set of circumstances that I personally had created that had caused this. I am very, very lucky that the male friends that I have are very comfortable having those sorts of conversations. And I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll never not be grateful for how supportive they were. I have, I have never, even with the blokiest bloke I know, ever had anything but support and empathy and compassion when I've talked to them about it because I, th I think even the worst laddie lad knows how to pick their moment. So even if your mates aren't all hippies, I think, I think you can talk to them about it. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't think of anything more anyone else could have done. The, the support we had around us was incredible. Um, I, yeah, I could just, I could phone friends, I could text friends, I could email friends and just blurt whatever was in my head, the, the most sad things, and they would just absorb it for me and just let me let it out and just try to do whatever I could to move on. They were fantastic. I think if I could talk to me from when it happened, I, I would encourage me to find, even if you can find five minutes, just to talk about how you feel to someone away from your quite reasonable obligation to support your partner. I, th I think it can only be healthy to articulate and explore that and and you know cry just get it I, it's it is always better to get it out and do it and i should have done that it is not i do not consider it a, i do not consider it a positive character trait that i did not allow myself to feel anything for a week that is not good that i did that i also know i would definitely do it exactly the same again because blokes but it's not that doesn't mean that's good advice but i I empathise with why you do that. I guess, I guess what I can say is, if you need, as I did, to just get to a point where you felt they were all right before it was your turn, at that point I did really open up to people and I did let myself feel that stuff and I did talk about it and that was good. So if, if you're not in a position where you feel you can just go straight to me, 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 you need to wait, that doesn't mean you should not do that at your earliest opportunity. If 
I could speak to to me just after it had happened, I I would just repeat, it's not your fault, it's not your fault, it's not your fault. Um, you did everything right. Um, that's I, I think I would just need to make myself absorb that message quicker. I don't know that it's possible to absorb that message any quicker. Um, but I think the more people you have around you repeating it, that message, the the easier it is to allow yourself to accept that that's true.